situation, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. My daughter needs to be healed. Come on, Jesus. I need a better job. Jesus, Jesus. Call the name. My check. My check. Call One, two. Oh, Jesus. I'm calling him for you. Oh, Jesus. Don't, don't, feel, don't feel anything different. What's going on, St. Stephen? Oh, this is Reverend Juan Keith Smiley, the young adult this minister here at St. Stephen Church. I'm here to talk about Sunday school. Yeah, that's right. Sunday school. We have a Sunday school class for the young adults starting November the 5th. November the 5th is the first Sunday in November, and we'll be starting our brand-new Sunday school class at 1130, our right after Sunday morning service. It'll be held in the old uh, bookstore right here at St. Stephen Church. So please come out and be a part. Hello, I'm Derek Carr. I am the leader of the volunteer ministry here at St. Stephen's Church. I need your help. The church needs your help. So we are looking now for leaders, our helpers for our SSC security team. So what does that look like? What, what do you even need from us? Oh, so I'm asking for people that may have strong communication skills. I'm asking for people who can make good judgment, not be impulsive. You know, just make sure that you're able to help someone else who may not be able to help themselves. Now, this is all for in light of something uneventful may happen, but we want to be prepared and we want to make sure that we have a safety plan in place. And guess what? If you volunteer for that ministry, you can help us see that through. Now, one thing that would be helpful if you are a former police officer, military, EMS, artwork, any kind of service job, we would love to have you be. Welcome to the pre-worship experience. It's now known as The Scene. to me let us go into the house of the lord even when it's cold god Ooh. is still good yeah. ah, but i'm here <laughs> amen <laughs> we are so thankful to be here this morning i am sitting beside my sister it's my brother wdrb <laughs> So glad it is none other than Crystal Goodner Spratt. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. And it's always a pleasure when I come into the house. Let me tell you, it is 
for raising <laughs> out there. And, you know, I, you know, we just sometimes it's the little things. I thank God I had a garage yeah. that I could pull the car yeah. out of and really didn't feel the, how cold it was until I got back into my car after work. And I said, oh, yeah. Lord, it's cold. But it's such it's, it's a presence already here in the sanctuary. And I'm telling you, Rev seemed like he's going to put his foot on it today. Oh, yeah. He meant that at 8 o'clock. I got a little piece of that. It's <laughs> King Day. It's Dr. King Day, so just make sure you are here. He has given us some highlights, some yeah. interesting points about his life and just everything that our pastor can do. Uh, we are not going to labor long because we have some beautiful ladies with us here today, and we're going to talk to them in a minute to talk about our prayer conference because there's nothing like getting your house in order and praying and thanking the Lord for all that he's done. And I love that the prayer conference is always in January to start the year off Right. That's right. Because guess what? Prayer can do what God can do. Hey, all right. Man, look, he's already getting started. Why not? Get us all warmed up. And hey, if you're on your way to church, go ahead, slow down. But we want you to be sure to join us for worship. We've got the elements that we're going to be doing uh, the Lord's Supper today. So uh, if you are watching online, go ahead, rummage through your cabinets right about now and find something so you can go ahead and join us in partaking in the body. Um, before we get to what we're going to get to, we would be remiss if we did not mention the passing of J. Michael Brown. Wow. Uh, definitely a surprise and um, just our heartfelt condolences to his family. Yeah. What a giant yeah. of a man. And I believe it was this time last year where he did our View from the Pew yes. and uh, did a wonderful conversation with us. And I didn't even realize that he was one of the special, he was um, on the David McAtee case uh, for the uh, shooting that took place yeah. back in 2020, but he was a man of so many firsts, and uh, he rounded out his career at Simmons College, and we were so blessed to be able to have him. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So uh, you are part of the prayer ministry. Why don't you I go am. ahead and introduce today's special guest? So to my left is a beautiful Miss Diane Almer, who gives, uh, she is the, I say, vice president of the prayer ministry, <laughs> if that's what we call it. And then this is Sister Reverend Linda Button to my right, and she is the leader of the um, the leader of the uh, prayer ministry. And these two ladies are amazing. So they are here to give us some insight on what's going to happen next Saturday. Uh, <clears throat> on January 20th, we have a packed conference. If you haven't gotten your ticket, I'm telling you, you are missing out. So tell us what's going to happen. What is Saturday going to look like? Well, I'm excited, excited, excited. But it doesn't take much when you love Jesus. <laughs> hey, when you love Jesus, you want everybody else to know him. Absolutely. And you want to know the prayer that he puts in our hearts. We can't live without prayer. It's like heaven. It's trying to live without oxygen. That's it. For a Christian. We have to pray in order to breathe and to live. So the prayer conference is this Saturday on the 20th from 9 to 12. We have a dynamic um, speaker lineup. God has some anointed preachers that are coming. And Dr. Naisha Owens from Kingdom Fellowship. Um, Reverend Diane Lewis Johnson, y'all know Diane, mm -hmm. uh, from a Bates Memorial Baptist Church. And then Dr. Corey Shaw from Burnett Avenue Baptist Church. Powerful. Those are our speakers, but we're going to have some powerful prayer warriors. Oh, yeah. Because St. Stephen's has powerful yes, we do. prayer yeah. warriors. Y'all hear me? Yeah. And so they're coming to pray. It's a prayer conference. And so we're going to have a wonderful time. You're right that Sister Diane Ulmer is our co-leader. Uh, she does a wonderful job. Yesterday we were together. We had a walk in the gym. My sister prayed us up, and we were able to walk. <laughs> she prayed, and so we thank God for her and her leadership, and as she supports the entire prayer ministry. We have tickets, y'all. Tickets in the concourse. You need to make sure you get your ticket. It's a worthy investment in your life. Anytime you can do something for God and God can fill you back in. I read a scripture this morning for devotion that we have God's abounding grace. Yes. So this morning I said, God, I need your abounding grace because I don't know what's on the highway. Yeah. Crystal, I don't have a garage. But I went out and said, Lord, I don't want to clean this car off. I know but guess what right. God did? I turned on the windshield and the snow went what? off. <laughs> so that's abounding grace. Do you understand what I... He's that's good. abounding oh, yeah. grace. I felt a little he bit is. of so that. Whatever, whatever questions you got, Derek, I got to say Let me say this real quick. <laughs> I have noticed how each year you begin to add new elements to your conference. And uh, just talk a little bit about what you're hoping that uh, attendees will get this year and how it's going to differ hey, man, from years past. Our vision for this year, and our pastor actually gave us the vision, 
that we wanted to get other churches, sister churches. It's about the church universal, not just about St. Stephen's, but all of us should be praying. We're living in such a season and time in our lives, and Pastor's going to, he dealt with it earlier at 8, that if the church does not pray, if my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, and seek his face. Then we would hear from heaven, and what would he do? Heal our land. That's what we need. So what do we need? Healing. So we want the church universal to come. So that's why we have speakers from several churches, other uh, churches that will be coming to pray. And so we're excited about that. I love that. Okay. And, and then, Miss Diane, before you come, I want you to say another thing, too, because I, I don't think a lot of people understand what happens with the prayer ministry. Mm-hmm. So how when prayers are collected, we pray over them. We don't just put things to the side. We, we collect them. We pray over them. And we collectively do this yes. week after week. Every- you know, um, how would somebody be a part of the prayer ministry? How can they become a part? Miss Diane. The prayer requests that were sent? Well, no, how do they become become a part part of the prayer ministry? Oh, becoming a part of the prayer ministry. Well, we are always available for, um, to talk with you one-on-one about becoming a member. We have team meetings on Saturday morning uh, where we talk about how we can be of service to the church as a ministry. And the prayer requests that we get, they... They come in constantly, you know, in several different ways. They can uh, come from just standing in the hall talking with someone, and someone will come up to you and say, pray for me. And so we get those prayer requests out to each of the members, and we pray for every single one, you know, that is sent to us. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God hears every prayer that we, that we pray. And we believe that God will do something about it, you know. And so we are counting on him. We are trusting his promises that he has already given to us in his word, you know. So um, to become a part of the prayer ministry, we'd love to have you. If you have a passion for talking with the Lord and and want to intercede on behalf of others, so just talk with us after today or uh, we've got some contact information that we can get to you where you, we can get you involved quickly you know so we can start praying for our church you can reach out to me at lbunn at sclive.org and dulmer u-l-m-e-r at sclive.org we will send you some information about the yes. prayer ministry so you won't go it into it you'll go into it informed yeah on how you can be a better prayer warrior our whole goal is we're not experts and I think what the devil would want us to think is that we have to have certain skills and eloquent of speech to be able to pray. That's not what God is looking for. Right. He's looking for a heart with a passion for him, a passion for people, a passion to want to see this world be better and for us to be better Christians. Absolutely. So all of us can pray. Amen. All yeah. of us can pray. So Amen. we invite you to join us. Amen. 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 Um, again, we encourage everyone to take part in this prayer conference, which is coming up next Saturday. And let me tell you, my prayer life has always been good, but now when I tell you it's taken to another level being in this new position, and and I love it when uh, the word tells us that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And let me tell you what the Lord told me, and I remember coming into this position, and there's some areas in which is all new to me, and he says, you're going to have to lean and depend on me daily. So you best believe as I'm driving into work, and I'm in that car, I'm just asking and inviting God, God, fill me, God. God, tell me, you know, lead me in how I'm supposed to uh, act in God. Whatever it is that I'm supposed to do, God, just feel me. And uh, just the beauty, just the power of prayer has really been revealed to me this you know, year. Sister Crystal, that's the first thing I do before my feet hit the ground yes. every morning is that I ask God to fill me with his presence. Yes. Linda can do nothing Come without on. God. Apart from him, I am nothing. But when I ask him to fill me with his presence, yes. it's not a one and done. We should continually ask God to yes. fill us all day with long. his presence yes. all, day, all long. day long. And Crystal, you're right. I found myself sitting in the midst of really difficult meetings. Mm. I'm in the room. I'm praying. Me too. They talking. I'm yes. praying. Yes. Because I need God to give me the yes. right words at the yes. right time, and yes. he'll do it. Yes. I've seen him do it. Time yes. and time again. Yes. Amen. Like a supernatural thing. Yes. I mean, it's almost kind of like Clark Kent. And Superman, <laughs> yeah. you know, that is your secret weapon. Yes. 
It's literally inviting him to come on in and make the way and light the path, really. He will. Wow. He'll give you insight and words you never knew That's were your vocabulary. You had. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> he is too good. Uh, anything else to add before yes. you go? I'd like to mention, I hope each one of you are joining us during this fasting season. We started fasting the 1st of January, and we will be until the end of this month. But God has already pr provided us with an increase. We now have Seek His Face prayer services in Indiana and Hardin County now. Amen. We didn't have that before. <clears throat> you know, and so our Hardin County campus is with us on, on Wednesday nights this month at 6 o'clock. Hope you're joining it joining us for the prayer call at 6 o'clock, but they are true witnesses in Hardin County. Yes. As to, they bring it every, They're every powerful. Wednesday night. Hardin you know? County is off the chain. Oh, change. it's a blessing. Yeah. And join us Wednesday night, really. It's a 30-minute call. We don't keep you long, yep. but we pray strong. That's yep. right. Amen. And so they're powerful. I'll, can I go ahead? No, no. Before, you're gonna go, no, okay. go ahead. Before we go... Our community, uh, I was doing an interview with someone, and actually it's Pat Matheson, and she said West Louisville is on fire, mm -hmm. and it's not in a good way. Okay. And uh, the news yesterday of the four-year-old little boy who was shot in the head and passed away on mm -hmm. yesterday, and so there's so many mm -hmm. issues surrounding West Louisville. Mm -hmm. Could you do a prayer for our community before you go? Absolutely. You're ready for Amen. Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus. Hmm. God, we feel the pain of this moment, oh God. Our babies are precious to you, God, but even more also to that mother that lost a baby, Lord. We just pray for the covering of the family and whoever the perpetrator was or whatever the incident is, God, you know. God, this community needs you. And God, bring us back to our foundation. You have been our foundation. You have been our rock and our strength, as Crystal just alluded to. In our weakness, you are our perfection. God, I pray for this community, God, in West Louisville, God. We need you, God. We need your presence. We need you to shake us, make us, become all that you would have us to be and all that you created us to become. I have not seen our ear heard what you've purposed in the hearts of the men, women, boys, and girls that love you. God, let us call on your name. We know there's power in your name, Lord, that you can bring down strongholds. You can shake things, God, that we have no strength to do. God, do it for us. Do it for us. Bring us back to you, oh God. You said if my people, we are your people, God. Be with us. Strengthen us. Yeah. Empower us with your word. God, let the church be a witness. Yeah. St. Stephen is full of powerful men and women of God. Let us be your voice. Tell somebody about Jesus. Yeah. Why are we silent when we have so much to say about you, God, and how good you are to us? We bless you. We praise you. We thank you for this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 I receive that. I receive that. And you know, I'll just say this, you know, oftentimes West Louisville always feels overlooked. You yeah. know, the East End getting all those new publics and West Louisville's going to get a Popeye's. <laughs> but I truly am <laughs> believing that in my lifetime, this community is going to be transformed. Absolutely. And it's going it's to coming. be taken back to the glory days. I really believe In it. the name of Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Ladies, thank you so much. So we have a video that we want you to watch with us a little more information about the prayer conference. Please give the screen your attention. Thank you. Our prayer ministry presents Our prayer, ministry prayer presents conference 2024. Prayer, conference 2024. Prayer, 2024. That prayer that unleashes the power of God. January 20th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The power of intercessory prayer. The speaker will be Dr. Naisha Owens Patterson, Associate Pastor of Kingdom Fellowship. The power of praying the promises of God. Reverend Diane Johnson, Associate Pastor at Bates Memorial Baptist Church. And the keynote speaker for this event will be Reverend Dr. Corey Scholl, Senior Pastor of Burnett Avenue Baptist Church. Tickets for this event are just $20 and $10 for youth, ages 12 to 18. You can register today at eventbrite.com and the deadline for registration is January 14th. Also during the month of January, Daniel Fasting and Prayer, which will take place January 1st through the 31st. Our prayer ministry presents Seek His Face Prayer Time on Saturday, January 6th from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. across all of our campuses. Walk with the Flock Prayer Walk which will take place at the Family Life Center on Saturday, January 13th from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. 
Our church-wide prayer call every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And also, watch for the weekly virtual prayer before each Wednesday and service. For more information, contact Rev. Linda Bunton at lbunton at ssclive.org. We are back, and I hope that you will be a part of next Saturday. Get your tickets today for the prayer conference. We have another gentleman with us today, and that is uh, Mr. Mondre Moffitt. I always call him Doctor. <laughs> Dr. Mondre Moffitt. Um, so we're talking about the concert on today. Um, our mass choir performing with the Louisville Orchestra is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we did it a couple years ago, uh, pre-COVID, and it was dynamic, dynamic. And uh, so we wanted to tell you that initially we had said the concert will be at 3.30. It's actually going to be at 3 p.m. So please make sure you are here today. You don't want to miss it. The choir has been preparing. The orchestra is ready. It's going to be amazing. Uh, so please make sure you come and take part of that. All right. The Louisville Orchestra presents Together in Song, a collaboration between St. Stephen's Music Ministry and the Louisville Orchestra. And I always love to tell this story. Teddy Abrams talks about how when he first came to this community, uh, he he was asking around who has the best music ministry. He would ride his bike to the church, sit in the back row because he says, Un hands down, St. Stephen is the best when it comes to music here in this city. And so it's just a wonderful pairing of the two. Last night's concert was at the Kentucky Center. Yes. And what does Dr. Cosby call this? Kentucky Center West. And so it's going to be a Kentucky Center West tonight, and it's absolutely free. Uh, Dr. Moffitt, talk about your involvement, and you know someone very special that is uh, part of the production. Yes. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's good to be back home at this desk. It's yes. a sacred desk. <laughs> Come on, uh, sacred desk. <laughs> I tell you, I was at the concert last night, and when I saw the initial inversion, I looked at this name that I know one of my mentors, Fred Wesley. Mm. And I said, oh, my God, Fred Wesley is coming? And I actually had interviewed him on SSC Live, yes. uh, season three, episode seven. So you can go and get season three, episode seven, and hear my interview with this legendary uh, musician, uh, Fred Wesley, who was very much involved with the movement of the 60s. He was the music director for James Brown. Wow. He was the guy that say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. This is his whole social critique. Well, I called Fred Wesley Thursday thinking that, oh, he's probably in town. Now, Fred is 80 years old. And Fred was in New York performing at the Kennedy Center in New York City on Thursday night. And he leaves on Monday. He'd come out off an extensive European tour wow. for 2023 uh, wow. and had done some performances in South Africa. And so he's busy. Yeah. And that was just so inspiring. So I, we got to, right? and I'm sure I'm going to spend some time with him uh, after today because he's going to be leaving on Monday morning. So how did you enjoy the concert last night? Oh, my God. Let us know what's going to happen if people miss it today. I mean, what's, what are they going to miss? I really appreciate what uh, Teddy Abrams is doing together in song. It was totally elite in every aspect. And the glue was St. Stephen's. Mem uh, oh, musical, man, the glue, uh, the glue, St. Stephen's music ministry under the fabulous directionship of uh, Kevin James. I'm just, I just sit back and marvel at what they're able to accomplish with so many different things and, and, and the way they're able to move and, and always excellent. Yes. And so, uh, and then uh, I just told Jason his piece was like a finale mm. in the middle of the, so Jason Claiborne. Uh, it was just a really phenomenal concert. I was just so, so, uh, I, my wife was with me, and we just, we stayed uh, about two hours after the concert at a wow. reception. Wow. And I had a hard time sleeping because mm. the music keep playing in my head, you know. Mm. But this wow. bringing together of those commu uh, black music is what my, uh, is my scholarship. Mm -hmm. And so I was just so pleased to see that black music is, in a sense, getting its due. Mm. Uh, all of the attributes because, you know, that was a time when if you play black music, the question was, oh, do you play legit? Mm. Uh, it was referred to, the assumption was black music, it must be illegit. It was, if you play classical music, it was legit. And so, therefore, if you play black music, it was illegit. 
So uh, we had to live through that. Yeah. And so those, those concepts and those misrepresentations are really uh, changing. And we know that is nothing but a lie. I, grandmama would uh, be rolling over <laughs> her grave if she heard me say lie. Because black music is the foundation is. of all other genres. All music, yes. You and I had an opportunity to do oh, a yes. music history presentation a couple of years back. Yes. And it was so great. Starting from the drum, uh, the usage of the drums with African music and the evolution of different sounds of music. And so you're saying that everybody is in for a real treat. I, I know there's going to be a different experience. I'll be here because even though it's the same concert, but it's a different venue. Oh, yeah. And that makes yeah. a world of difference. So uh, we don't know what to expect because it's spontaneous music is, impro is invoking improvisation. So um, Teddy Abrams were inviting people to dance uh, at the Kentucky Center. <laughs> I don't really think that invitation has to be invited, you know, oh, no. extended here. Oh, so, no like that. So, <laughs> so it was wonderful. Right. Wonderful. So, and then what I remember pre-COVID when we had, we did a show before, I don't think nobody really knew what to expect. But I will just give you a little setup. It was absolutely beautiful. The orchestra was all in this space. Wow. The choir was all in the back. We just... Praise the Lord mm. the way we do with the full orchestra. And I'm telling you, if you do not come today, you are going to miss out. It's already cold outside. You don't have to go to work tomorrow. Most of you don't. What are you going to miss? Come this afternoon with tiptoe anticipation of what the Lord is going to do here in this venue today. So make, make sure you come and support our choir and the Louisville Orchestra today at 3 p.m., okay? All right, great. Uh, yeah, definitely come on out and support. We've got a couple of announcements uh, to make, but real quick, we've got to shout out our pastor who is celebrating his 19th yeah. anniversary <laughs> as being president also. of Simmons College of Kentucky. If somebody asks you, what can you do in 19 years? My goodness, a book needs to be written about how he took a school that lacked accreditation, lacked a facility, really, was actually uh, operating in a condemned building to uh, owning multiple properties and being uh, recognized as the nation's 107th HBCU and, and uh, just everything that Simmons College is doing. And you now a proud student. Yep, Simmons Falcon, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, and it's amazing because I remember being at the ceremony at Louisville Gardens. That's Ooh. where it was when we, inaugurate, when we inaugurated Pasta as the president of Simmons College. It wow. was at uh, Louisville Gardens. And I remember walking. I was like, what is going to happen? Mm. And now look at it. The world's only HBC, comeback HBCU. Yes. Yes. That has done so many things, so many great professors. People have come. Rev has just done so much. He, he is definitely, he deserves his due as absolutely. our president of Simmons College and as our pastor. This man is absolutely a man of God. If you don't believe anything else, believe that. <laughs> Amen. And we support each and every one of you that have uh, supported a game yeah. or, or, you know, helped a student in whatever capacity. We, can, uh, we definitely appreciate your continued support. Real quick, a couple of events. The MLK Celebration Day is taking place in Lexington, Kentucky. And musical guests uh, include United Voices of Chicago and United Voices of Lexington. And our very own pastor is going to be the keynote speaker for that event. And then there's going to be a march at 1 p.m. and the commemorative program at 2 p.m. And it's going to be taking place at the Central Bank, Bank Center there in Lexington. Also on King Day at 6 p.m., pastor's not playing. Come on, <laughs> full itinerary. Central District Baptist Association presents Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration at the St. Paul Shavley Baptist Church, 2627 Crumbs Lane, Louisville, Kentucky, 40216, featuring Robert, Reverend Robert Drake, CDBA moderator, and Reverend Dr. Kevin Cosby, guest speaker. And Reverend Derek Haynes, as host pastor, proceeds will, uh, I'm sorry, proceeds will benefit Derek to care, okay? Absolutely. And then Black History Season, uh, Jan uh, January 15th through April 4th. You notice we said Black History Season. Yeah, come on, because we blackity black black. Yeah, we're giving back the month. We're taking a, a whole year. season. That's what we right? do, right? So we got us a season now. So we forget that month thing. So Black History Season is January 15th through April the 4th. 
All right. And then also Simmons College of Kentucky and the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson Sr. Center for Racial Justice presents. This is going to be a good event. It's coming up on Tuesday, and it is a viewing and panel discussion of a documentary entitled Stamped from the Beginning. The viewing of the documentary is going to be at 5 p.m., and then the panel discussion is going to follow the documentary. And listen to this lineup of this panel. We have got Dr. Ricky Jones is going to be part of the panel, uh, MLK Scholar, Dr. Stuart Burns, and Dr. Jamar Tisby is also going to be included in that conversation. I hope they have more than just an hour allotted for this conversation because <laughs> it's going to be heavy. And also Dr. Erica Whitaker is going to be part of this discussion. It's going to be moderated by our fave, Mr. Stefan Johnson. And so we uh, encourage you to come on out and take part in this event. And uh, I believe that is all of the announcements. Mr. Derek Carr, get us revved up and ready for church. So in the spirit of Dr. King and who he is, and I think about this relates to our faith as well. Dr. King said, if you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep moving. Don't let nothing stop you. Keep moving. And the same thing with your faith. If you can't run yet, then you walk. If you can't walk yet, then you crawl. But it all means you know that God is still on the throne and he is good. Let's get ready for worship, you all. When I was in college, I went to when hear I was this in college, preacher, and he, I went he was a manuscript preacher. He, preacher. he was a manuscript So he was the first person who made a so profound he, impact on my style. He liberated me to preach, to, to feel like I could do uh, this assignment that God had called me to. When I went to seminary, I was exposed to men like Dr. William Augustus Jones, God's program is personality-centered and personality-directed. Uh, there can be no leading without a leader. Like Dr. Gardner C. Taylor. When the only thing you've got, the, or maybe the only thing America has that is still independent is the black church. Dr. Wyatt T. Walker. Well, when I heard those men preach, I had never heard language like that. I but because we are tied up in the garment of mutuality that is in the family of faith, Jesus said to his disciples, I no longer call you servants. You are my brethren and sisters. And I've tried to mold my ministry uh, after them because not only did they emphasize social justice and liberation for their people, but they also turned around and did the practical thing of developing uh, concrete ministries in their communities that help to build up the community and bring stability to the lives of the people. Dive into the captivating world of homiletics. Learn from preacher extraordinaire Dr. James C. Perkins, where every lesson is a stepping stone to becoming a more impactful preacher and leader. Simmons College of Kentucky, where your journey to greatness begins. Scan the QR code to learn more about what awaits you on this educational journey. Our prayer ministry presents Prayer Conference 2024, prayer that unleashes the power of God. January 20th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The Power of Intercessory Prayer. The speaker will be Dr. Naisha Owens-Patterson, Associate Pastor of Kingdom Fellowship. The Power of Praying the Promises of God. Reverend Diane Johnson, Associate Pastor at Bates Memorial Baptist Church. And the keynote speaker for this event will be Reverend Dr. Corey Scholl, Senior Pastor of Burnett Avenue Baptist Church. Tickets for this event are just $20 and $10 for youth, ages 12 to 18. You can register today at eventbrite.com, and the deadline for registration is January 14th. Also during the month of January, Daniel Fasting and Prayer, which will take place January 1st through the 31st. Our prayer ministry presents Seek His Face Prayer Time on Saturday, January 6th, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. across all of our campuses. Walk with the Flock Prayer Walk 
which will take place at the Family Life Center on Saturday, January 13th from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Our church-wide prayer call every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And also, watch for the weekly virtual prayer before each Wednesday and service. For more information, contact Rev. Linda Bunton at lbunton at ssclive.org. St. Stephen Baptist Church's Men's Ministry presents its virtual book club. Join host Deacon Ed Maxwell and the St. Stephen Men's Ministry for the weekly book club. It's going to be kicking off on January 10th from 8.30 to 10.15 via Zoom. This month's book selection, The Hidden Roots of White Supremacy and the Path to a Shared American Future by Robert P. Jones. For more information, contact Deacon Ed Maxwell at emaxwell at ssclive.org. There's going to be an MLK celebration in Lexington, Kentucky, with musical guest Uniting Voices of Chicago and United Voices of Lexington. The special keynote speaker will be our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby. This will take place on Monday, January 15th. The Freedom March will be at 1 p.m. Commemorative program will be at 2 p.m. This will take place at the Central Bank Center in Lexington, Kentucky. And then at 6 p.m., there will be another MLK celebration brought to you by the DBA Central District Baptist Association. It's going to be held at the St. Paul Shively Baptist Church, 2627 Crumbs Lane. And it's going to feature speakers like Reverend Robert Drake, who is the moderator of the CDBA. And our pastor will be a special guest speaker, along with Reverend Derek Hayes, who's the host pastor. Proceeds from this event will go to benefit Dare to Care. And then on Tuesday, January 16th, Simmons College of Kentucky, along with the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson Sr., Center for Racial Justice, presents a viewing and panel discussion of the documentary, Stamped from the Beginning. The documentary will begin at 5 p.m., and then the panel discussion will begin at 6.30 p.m. The panelists include Dr. Ricky Jones, Dr. Stuart Burns, Dr. Jamar Tisby, and Dr. Erica Whitaker. This discussion will be moderated by Stefan Johnson of WDRB News. On Tuesday, January 16th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., our senior saints will host a health fair sponsored by CenterWell. There will be medical specialists on site for eyes, ears, and blood pressure checks, lunch and bingo included. For more information, contact Reverend Josie Gilbert at jgilbert at ssclive.org. shadow we stand today sign the emancipation proclamation but 100 years later the negro still is not free 100 years later the life of the negro is still badly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination 100 years late the 100 years later the negro is still languished in the corners of american society and finds himself in exile in his own land so we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protests to degenerate into physical violence. We cannot walk alone, and as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. 
We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of their adulthood and robbed of their dignity by signs stating, for whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro in Mississippi cannot vote and the Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day in this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that one day in Alabama, with its vicious races, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and notification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. When we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every city and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews, Gentiles, Protestants, and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Oh, just leave it. Praise the Lord, everybody. Y'all give it up for these young doctors and lawyers. Hallelujah. It is ML King weekend. What's your dream? What dream? There is no dream too extreme. Dream big. It's time to dream big. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together for the Lord is good. I say the Lord is good. Has he been good to anybody? I know it's cold outside, but we're in the house of the Lord, and we come to get our praise on this morning. We shall overcome someday. Come on, clap your hands and bless the Lord as we worship the King of Kings. We want to welcome all of our campuses and our online campus to church this morning. Hallelujah.
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we overcoming now. Give God praise one more time. Hallelujah. 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 This is a season of prayer. Um, we have a wonderful prayer ministry that has put on a wonderful conference that will be held on January the 20th. Everybody say January the 20th. Prayer conference will be here. I believe that if you're going to have a productive life, a, a, a life full of abundance, you have to do it with prayer and praise. Amen. Somebody say prayer and praise. Directors, your, your attention to the screens, please. Psalms 68 and 28 and Psalms 139, 7 through 8. Pray for God's power and presence to manifest in all lives during this time of prayer and fasting and for the power of God to be unleashed at the prayer conference. Hello, my name is Stu Melvin. I'm the trustee chairman and the co-leader of the prayer ministry on the Hardin County campus. This week, our focus scriptures come from the book of Psalms. The first is Psalm 68, 28, which is David's appeal to God's omnipotence in dealing with his enemies. He prays, summon your power, God. Show us your strength, our God, as you have done before. Then in Psalm 139, verses 7 through 8, we see David's quiet meditation on God's omnipresence, where he asks, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Let us pray. Jesus, we exalt you as Lord of all. We say hallelujah to your name as you deserve the highest praise as our creator, Lord, and Savior. We thank you for this fresh start that you've given us in this new year. We wait with anticipation for the wonderful plans to unfold that you have for us. Plans to prosper us and to give us a hope and a future. We stand among the great cloud of witnesses to your power and your presence. The power to cause all things to work together for our good and your presence to be with us at all times and through all times. I pray that this year, your people will seek to know you better through prayer. I pray that they will come to know that the answer to all of our problems in this life can be found in quiet communing with you, O oh Heavenly Father. Now in the name of Jesus and by the power of your spirit in 2024, enable us to have our minds always on the things of God and to be in constant, intimate, and honest communication with you so that every moment may be as fruitful as possible and the strongholds of the enemy would be broken. When the problems of life arise, may our first response be to call on that name that's above all names, that precious, wonderful name of Jesus. And may our faith, though it be the size of a mustard seed, move the mountains of worry, doubt, and trouble from in front of us to behind us. Empower us, Lord, by the aid of the Holy Spirit that in 2024, we will seek first your kingdom and your righteousness through quiet meditation and communion with you so that this year will be better than last year and we can experience you on a deeper level and receive your peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name today. And bless your people, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Through prayer, 2024 could be the most transforming year of your life. And I hope you resolve to make this year the year that you pray more so that you, like David, can experience God's power and God's presence in your life. Be blessed. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 15, starting with verse 1 through 7. Reading from NIV, the word of God reads, We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors 
for their good, to build them up. Even for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. So that with one mind and with one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. To the reading and the hearing of his word. We're blessed today to participate in the communion of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is said you are what you eat. This is one of the few ordinances that uh, adds calories to your life. Amen? With the intent to ingest and digest all that Christ has done, all that Christ means to you. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me as we participate in this communion of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're honored today to have this communion. We're honored today to have this blessing. Let us pray to, upon this ordinance of Christ as we participate one to another. Eternal God, we thank you, Lord, for this occasion to again do what you ask us to do in remembrance of you. We thank God for this occasion. We thank God for the blessedness of this uh, ordinance. That we might be more like you. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you did for us so we could do more for you and more for each other. This is our prayer today in the strong and perfect name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as the communion is being served. Jesus said, this bread represents my body that was broken for you. Let us commune together.
As we take the wine, Jesus said, This is my blood that was shed for the remission of your sins. Let us all commune together. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Praise our God. Amen. Sing that chorus. In the cross. In the cross. about the name Jesus. And when I woke up this morning, I didn't really know why that song happened to be on my mind and in my heart. And then I walked outside and it was cold. I said, Jesus. <laughs> it was real cold. And even on the way to church, and I was like, uh, the verse, it says, um, um, uh, some people say I'm crazy, but I can't explain the power that I feel when I call his name. It's just like fire, right? Shut up in the bones, right? So at the name of Jesus, it'll warm you from the inside out. And I want you to remember that because my friends at the station, the meteorologists, they tell me it's about to get colder this week. So when you're outside and you're feeling that chill, just say, Jesus, I need you right now. 
Well, my name is Gilbert Corsi, and I rise to welcome a special group of people. First, those who are inside their homes, maybe couldn't get out into the cold this morning. We get it. We understand you're worshiping online, but please do us a favor. If you're watching on ssclive.org, you're watching on the app, you're watching on YouTube, wherever you are watching right now, please share the link and invite your friends and followers online into the worship experience. Now, to those of you in service who may be visiting with us uh, as a guest, whether it's your first time, your fifth time, if you're not yet a member of St. Stephen Church and visiting this morning, could you please stand to your feet so that we can show you a little bit of love? Visitors, please stand. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, my brother. Good morning. Good morning back there as well. Good morning over here as well. Hey, we are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us here at St. Stephen. There are so many good churches, great churches all over the city of Louisville, and we are, are delighted that you've chosen to be here at the St. Stephen this morning. We know that our pastor, Dr. Cosby, has a dynamic word, and that it will carry you with that fire for the week ahead. Hey, a couple quick things I want to let you know about uh, before we take our Sunday selfie, and that is this wonderful music ministry did its thing last night at the Kentucky Center, and it's going to do it again tonight here. So in case you haven't heard, in case you don't know, uh, Together in Song is a joint venture between the St. Stephen Music Ministry and the Louisville Orchestra. We are bringing orchestra, orchestra music and black gospel music together in fused sound, guys. And if you weren't there at the Kentucky Center last night, if you aren't in service this morning, don't miss your opportunity to see it today at 3 p.m. free right here at St. Stephen. <laughs> together in song. Hey, and if you're already here, I'm just going to float an idea out to you. You talk to the person you're at church with. After service, don't leave. Just head on over to Maddie's Kitchen. It's open. And then come back into the sanctuary for this concert at 3 o'clock, all right? It's time for that Sunday selfie, friends. You pull out your cell phone. I don't have mine on me, but Jason, come on over here. We'll show them how it works. Yep. You take that picture. You tell them you look good. <laughs> and you share it with the hashtag SSC Live. Thanks so much, church. Pass the love.
Amen. St. Stephen Church, it's giving time. It's giving time in the Lord's house, giving time in your house as well. And you know what? We're looking forward to a wonderful 2024. Amen. How many folk are looking for blessings in 2024? You want to achieve more in 2024? Well, I've got the key. I've got the key to unlocking achieving more in 2024. You may look all over for the key, but here's the key. Here's the key. The key is gratitude. Gratitude unlocks 2024. Because watch this. If, if you can't find your gratitude, it's time to check your attitude. You, you got it. You've got to approach this year with a heart of gratitude. And, and the way we express gratitude is we come before the Lord with God's tithe, with our offerings, because we are blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Do, do you want God? Welcome our online worshipers. It's time to give. Malachi 3 and 10 says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, that's God's house, and then put him to the test, says the Lord of hosts. It will open the windows of heaven and pour down blessings that there will be no need in your house. Here's how to give here at St. Stephen's Church. You can give online at sseLive.org. You can text SSCLive to 833-602-0575. Or you can cash out this dollar sign SSC Live 1. Again, that's dollar sign SSC Live 1. Or you can mail your check to the attention of the trustee board, 1018 South 15th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40210. Thank you again on behalf of the senior pastor and the St. Stephen Church for always giving.
God is worthy of all glory. God is worthy of you all say. God is good. Amen. I said God is good. All right. All right. A, a couple of things we want to share with you as uh, it is uh, MLK weekend. You, you, you know what? MLK weekend, Martin Luther King weekend is actually the opening of a new season, right? It, it's the opening of black history season. Now, now, now watch. If you're just thinking February, you're not thinking big enough. Right, Black, Black History season is a season that, that commences this weekend, commences with the birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., right, on the 15th of January, and goes all the way through April 4th, the anniversary of the martyrdom of Dr. King. So it's, it's not just a Black History Month, it's Black History season, and we're, move, we're stepping into the season this weekend. Right. And, and there's there's so much. And you, you know what? I want to encourage you to check the website for St. Stephen Church, SSC Live dot org. Want you to uh, keep up with all of our social media for the many events that are going to be coming up during this black history season. But coming up directly coming up very soon. Now, just want to let you know on Monday, which is tomorrow, MLK Celebration Day in Lexington, Kentucky, with musical guests, Uniting Voices of Chicago and Uniting Voices of Lexington, and the keynote speaker at uh, 2 p.m. for the commemorative program is going to be our own Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby in Lexington at the Central Bank, Bank Center. Also, tomorrow at 6 p.m., at 6 p.m., the Central District Baptist Association is going to be presenting their MLK Junior Day celebration at the St. Paul Shively Baptist Church. And uh, the, the, once again, our featured speaker is going to be our own pastor, the Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby. Encourage you to check that out. That's going to be at 6 p.m. And then on Tuesday, Tuesday we have a special, uh, special panel discussion that's going to be coming up. The Simmons College of Kentucky, Reverend uh, Jesse Lewis Jackson Jr. Center for Racial Justice prevents a viewing and panel discussion of the documentary film Stamped from the Beginning. So the viewing is going to take place at 5, uh, but at 6.30 p.m. will be the panel discussion. And our panelists include Dr. Ricky Jones, uh, Dr. Stuart Burns, Dr. Jamar Tisby, and Dr. Erica Whitaker are going to be there, and it's going to be moderated by our own Stefan Johnson. So I encourage you to be a part of that. That's going to be on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. And now uh, right here at St. Stephen Church. Also, I would like to uh, ask you to join me in recognizing and appreciating our own Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby, who is celebrating 19 years as the president of Louisville's own historically black college and university, Simmons College of Kentucky. Congratulations on 19 years. 
President Kevin Cosby. God bless you. God bless you. Now, uh, would, uh, one, other, one other note just to let you know, the, the weather is going to be getting colder as we go through the week. So the Not Done Yet crew, uh, our senior ministry, their Tuesday program is going to be canceled due to the weather. So safety is our number one concern. So we, we love our seniors. Uh, we, we have some prayer concerns that we'd like to be sharing with the congregation, certainly. Uh, prayer concerns, first of all, for uh, the family of J. Michael Brown. J. Michael Brown passed on Friday. He was a beloved member of the, the, the staff at Simmons College of Kentucky. Pastor can certainly say a little bit more about that in a few moments. But uh, what a terrific leader, what an amazing leader for our community. Uh, J. Michael Brown, so we want to be keeping his family in our prayers. Not only our community, but the entire state of Kentucky owes a debt to the service of J. Michael Brown. So we want to be keeping him in our prayers. Also, uh, Joseph Scott's mother passed, so we want to be keeping that family in our prayers as well. But let's go now to the Lord for a time of prayer together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you, before the throne of your grace and mercy, recognizing you, Heavenly Father, as the source of every good and perfect gift. We pray, Lord, for those who are going, undergoing uh, their walk through the valley of the shadow of death in this hour. We pray that you would give them support and encouragement, afford to them that peace that passes all understanding. Heavenly Father, we know there are those near and dear to us who are on their beds of affliction, who are uh, infirm, who are dealing with sickness and illness. And Lord, we just pray in intercession on their behalf that they would experience healing, a divine healing, a healing not only of body, but of mind and of spirit as well. Heavenly Father, we pray for West Louisville. We recognize, Lord, that you have established us in this community, that we might be effective intercessors for this community. Lord, we pray for the needs, economic, social, all of the different needs in this community, Lord. We, we intercede, recognizing, Heavenly Father, that prayer can do what you can do. So, Lord, we, we open our hearts to you. We pray, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, you would fill us with your grace and mercy that we might be overflowing vessels to show this community the love of Jesus Christ. Be with us now, Lord, as we prepare our hearts to receive your word. We'll give you all thanks, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say together, amen. 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 Too deep power. His bark is worse than. 
I just told Cynthia that if she needs a manager for, um, <laughs> that I'll go on the road with her. That girl can sing, y'all. Let's give her some love. Amen. Boy, it's so good to see the choir out. Look at you. Look at you, looking all good. Sedity and bougie and, and just looking wonderful. They, they can sing, can't they? Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, um, brothers and sisters, tomorrow night at the St. Paul Baptist Church, I hope I will see some St. Stephen folk in the place. All right. Come on now. We're moving into Black History season. Excited about it. Next month, during Black History Month, during the actual February month, I will be in, uh, beginning a series entitled, listen to this, White folk, black folk need to know. Now, next year, I'm going to preach a series for black history entitled Black Folk, Black Folk Need to Forget. <laughs> That's right. I got this thing. But there are, there is no way the black community could be where it is if it were not for righteous and just white freedom fighters who gave their life to advance our cause. Amen. Amen. So uh, we'll do that. But we've got a great month. Hope you'll take advantage. And of all that is going on. Tomorrow is King Day. I am a king man. I love me some Martin Luther King. Mike King. His, he was born Michael King. His father changed his name, his own name, to Martin Luther King Sr. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. was in my house as a boy. I saw my own eyes because my mother was his niece and nephew's piano teacher. Vernon, Darlene, I got pictures of my mother with Darlene King. She died jogging. I had a great neighborhood. One street had the Mitchells. Then I had behind me the Shobes greatest legal mind in history. Dr. Ben Show. <laughs> he was a bad man, y'all. Then around the corner from me, I had the Moseses. And down the street from me on the corner was Fred Sampson. How many of y'all heard of a man named Barack Obama? He wrote a book called The Audacity of Hope. He got that from Fred Sampson, who lived down the street from me in West Louisville. Had it going on back then. What happened to us? What do we need to do to fix it? The blueprint is in this book. Where do we go from here? Chaos our community. This is the blueprint. This is the blueprint right here. This is what you need. Pam, this is the blueprint. Chaos our community. He wrote, this is King's third book. He wrote two other books. Why We Can't Wait 
65 and stride towards freedom in 57. But this book right here is, you, if, you can't, if you don't have any book in your library, get this book and just read eight, the first eight pages. Take you 20 minutes. Get it. And get the one that's forwarded by Coretta Scott King and also Vincent Harding. So if you can take a picture of that, that's the book. So we'll keep it on the screen. And I want to read, and I'm going to be reading excerpts from the book. Okay. So let me go to page 95. And this is what it says. This is Dr. King speaking. The radical king. Because the king that you will be hearing so much about uh, in, in media and in the public is a watered down domesticated house broken deodorized king and this is what got him killed y'all A society, page 95, a society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for him in order to equip him to compete on a just and equal basis. One other word, page three. With the Selma and, and the Voting Rights Act, one phase of development in the Civil Rights Revolution came to an end. A new phase opened, but few observers realized it or were prepared for its implications. For the vast majority of white Americans, the past decade, the first phase had been a struggle to treat the Negro with a degree of decency, not equality. So what he is saying is that the civil rights struggle was not a singular movement from Montgomery where Rosa sat to Memphis in 1968. It was not a singular movement, but it was a movement with two phases. He said phase one was the fight for decency. Phase two was the fight for full equality. And most folk love only the first phase. And when the, when the king that you hear about is the king of the first phase, amen. But you don't want to hear about the king of the second phase. The king of the first phase was launched at his parsonage, 309 South Jackson Street, the parsonage of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. And it was a fight for decency. But the second phase was really being coordinated in his hotel room at 306, room 306 Lorraine, the Lorraine Hotel at 450 Mulberry Street. And you need to know those two phases. You need to know them. One in Montgomery, one in Memphis. 
Uh, I'll be going to Memphis later this month, Barnetta and I. The three conventions are coming together, the National Baptist Convention USA, the National Baptist Convention of America, and the, Na- and the National Progressive Convention will be coming together to forge an agenda to speak to the issues of our people. <clears throat> and, you, and I was asked by the president to write up the agenda. So I, I wrote the agenda and I will be leading a session, a, a moderating a session on reparations with Cornell West, who's on the panel, uh, Freddie Haynes, who succeeded Jesse Jackson, um, Bust, the great Buster Soares. Amen. And so I'll be going to Memphis later this month. Uh, there's already seven, ten, no, 10,000 people have already registered to go and talk about what we can do to come together <clears throat> to develop an agenda for our people. So we'll be in Memphis. But I know one thing I'm going to do while I'm there. It's what I do every time I, I go to Memphis. I'm not exactly sure the address of where the, the convention will take place, but I know that I am going <clears throat> to 450 Mulberry Street, where the Lorraine Hotel is, because I want to go there. The, the Lorraine, you, 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 you can see that iconic sign that lights up. The Lorraine Hotel. And I want to see that room, room 306, where King spent his last night. Lorraine Hotel was one of only a few hotels in Memphis during segregation in which black people could stay. It's not a swanky hotel. It's not a luxurious hotel. But it was black owned named Lorraine for the wife of the owner. It was, it was like a motel because it had a restaurant. And Memphis, which is known for what? Blues. And it's known for barbecue. Whenever Otis Redding would come to town, he would stay at the Lorraine Hotel, Otis Redding, sitting on the Dock of the Bay, watching the tides roll away, sitting at the Dock of the Bay, wasting time. He would stay there, oldest Redding. And the staple singers would stay there. Aretha stayed at Lorraine. But the only reason we know the Lorraine Hotel is because Martin Luther King Jr. gave his life and died when he stepped out on the terrace of the Rain Hotel in front of room 306 where he spent the night in room 306. He uh, was on his way to the house of the Reverend Billy Cowles. Barnetta and I, we spent time with Billy Cowles during many years ago during Thanksgiving. <clears throat> and they had picked up Dr. King and Jesse Jackson who wore at that time overalls, which was the, the uniform for activists back in the late 60s. And he had on his overalls and Dr. King, who always wore a necktie, said, Jesse, please put on a tie. And Jesse told him that dress is not a prerequisite for enjoying a meal, a good appetite is, Dr. King. And he was standing on that balcony. And someone said, it's kind of cool, Dr. King. It's windy. You need to go back and get your top coat. And before he could turn around to get his top coat, the sound 
of a gunshot echoing and reverberating through the windy sky of Memphis, Tennessee. And a high-powered rifle, how high-powered was it? It was a high-powered rifle, the rifle that is used to bring down game in Africa. The rifle King was shot with, they used to shoot down uh, uh, elephants. Jesse Jackson was here. We had lunch in my office here, and I asked Jesse who was there. I said, tell me about it. He said, Kevin, the bullet blew the knot off of Dr. King's tie and, and, and created a gaping hole in his neck. It was blood just poured down. You've seen that picture of Andrew Young and, and King's aides pointing across the street, Mulberry Street, where James Earl Warren shot Dr. King with that high power rifle and King with his foot propped up in the rails on his back with blood all around him. And that hotel room, room 306, that hotel, which was a place of rest for weary blacks during segregation, now is a hotel of pain because the life of the drum major, the greatest champion for justice, his life was snuffed out. I will go to Lorraine Hotel, and I hope you will go, if you are ever in Memphis, to 450 Marbury Street to Lorraine Hotel. In fact, I hope one day that St. Stephen Church, maybe some summer, we can get on some buses. And as a church, we can go to through Nashville and go to Memphis, go to the Civil Rights Museum in Selma, I Montgomery. Go to Montgomery, see Selma, amen. See where it started. But I'm going, and I hope you will go to Memphis. I hope when you're in Memphis that you'll go and you'll visit the Lorraine Hotel. And if you do, you will see this. It's now the National Civil Rights Museum. And you go through it, and then you get to the end, and you're looking in a glass. They quarter while put a glass up so you can see King's Hotel Room the way it was the day he spent his last night. Everything frozen in time. The television was there. The rotary phone is there. Two beds in the room. The ashtray where the ashes was because King was a chain smoker. Very depressed man, morbidly depressed. When he died and did an autopsy of his body, they said that this 39-year-old man had the heart of a 70-year-old. That's how much pressure Dr. King was. You see all the, the little things that remind you that he was just a human being. You see the magic shave, the can, because his beard, he couldn't use a razor because he bumped up. So he used magic shave. It stuck in time. It's the same way it was. April the 4th, 1968, when he died. And somehow that room, that iconic room, is emblematic and symbolic of race in America. Because just like that room has not changed in the important areas of racial justice, nothing has changed. R racism, unending, unrelenting, 
has not changed. Now, I know I'm going to get some pushback when I say this tomorrow in Lexington. I'm going to get some pushback. And someone's going to say, someone's going to think, even if they don't say it, they're going to think, you know, Kevin Cosby, you are engaging in extreme hyperbole. Uh, hyperbole, young folk, means over-exaggeration for effect. So if I say, I told you a thousand times, well, I didn't really didn't tell you a thousand times, but I use that as a hyperbole for the purposes of, of effect that you're not listening. And when I say that nothing of substance for which Dr. King was talking about in this book, where do we go from here, chaos on community, nothing, just like 30, room 306 has changed. And for black Americans, nothing substantively has changed. Now you're going to say, no, wait a minute. You mean if I compare the 60s with 2024, you can't see change? Back in the 60s, you didn't see blacks on Bonanza. Although Mayberry's in North Carolina where there's a plethora of black folk, you didn't see any blacks in Mayberry. Uh, Daniel Boone was a man. He had a sidekick. Uh, what was his name? I forgot. He had a Native American sidekick. Mingo. There you go. Y'all, how many of y'all remember Mingo? Y'all too young. Y'all young folk. Y'all, I'm old now, so I'm dating myself. But Mingo wasn't even a um, Native American. That's how Eurocentric everything was. You, you, get, you, got, you say things have not changed. You got three black coaches now who will be in the um, playoffs. <laughs> How many black coaches did you have in the 60s? None. You, you, you had white quarterbacks, Tarkenton and Namath. Uh, and you had uh, Unitas. And you had Bart Starr. You didn't have any black quarterbacks because it was believed we didn't have the acumen to be a quarterback. That's what they said about Lamar. He's, he's redefining the position, isn't he? You changed the game, Clay. But you got black quarterbacks. You got blacks in every echelon of society. You got blacks in business. You can back, blacks who served as a secretary of state, Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell. Uh, You've you got um, a black man as the secretary of defense. You've had a black man as the president of the United States. And you mean to tell me nothing has changed and we're stuck in room 306? Well, they love to talk about individuals. But it's called the NAACP, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. It's not the National Events Association for the Advancement of a colored person. It's people. And if you look at where we are economically, and where we were in the 60s, you have regressed. Black home ownership, you have more black home owners in the 60s than you do now. You had less blacks incarcerated then than you do now. You, you see, my brothers and sisters, this thing is a two-phase thing. I'm through. He, it's two phases. He said, phase one, I'm, he said, I'm fighting for decency. I'm trying to get us some decency. And I want us to just, just treat me right. 
I mean, if I pay my fare on the bus and sit down, it's not decent to tell me to get up just because of the color of my skin. Are y'all hearing me? If I'm 14 years old and I've been accused of whistling, and then you lynch me, and the lynchers don't get convicted, it's not decent. If I have to go and see a sign when I want some water, uh uh-uh, colored, it's not decent. If I can't go to a park just because of the color of my skin, that's not decency. If I am walking down a sidewalk, then my tax is paid. And a white person is coming towards me. If I have to get over in the gutter of, of the street to, with my head bowed, that's not decency. So Dr. King's first phase was to fight for decency. And guess what? He won. He won. The bus in Montgomery got integrated. The 64 Civil Rights Bill was passed, which meant you could go to any park, any hotel, drink from any water fountain, sit anywhere you want to sit on a train. And that did not happen until 1964. It was supposed to happen in 1875 with the passing of the Civil Rights Bill of 1875, but the Supreme Court shut it down. You didn't get a public accommodation until 1964. In fact, all you have to do, if you don't believe me, go over to Tark, the headquarters on Broadway. Used to be the train station. And, and there's a door with glass in it. And all you, anybody seen that door? All you have to do, you work there, you've seen it. It's just been down because they can't change it because it's a historical building. And this is what it says when you've been down. Colored. What does that do to your psyche when you are in a colored section and King fought against that? You, he gave us public accommodation through King and the Civil Rights Movement. You got public accommodation in 64. You got voting rights in 65. You should have got it in 1870 with the 15th Amendment, but they, they, they always twist that thing. They always. So can I tell you in one sentence what Dr. King did for us? Dr. King, hear me. That's why you don't let anybody say anything about Dr. King. Dr. King made black folk citizens. Bottom line, you did not become a citizen of the country you built until the 1960s. And that's why Trump can't tell me nothing. Because he is the son of immigrants. He is the first generation. I've been here 20 generations. You got a generation. A generation is every 20 years. Every 20 years, you got a new generation. 20 times 20 is 400 years. I've been here 20 generations from 1619. Vivac can't tell me no. Vivac Wamaswamy can't tell me a daggone thing. Because he is the son of an immigrant. He just got here in the last 50 years. Nikki Haley can't tell me nothing. She's the daughter of an immigrant. They just got here. But we've been here for 400 years, from 1619, hear me, and did not become citizens 
to the 60s. And don't, don't get it, don't, don't let anybody fool you. There's nobody like you in this country. That's why they hate you. They hate you because you are a constant reminder. You, every time they see you, you remind them of their crimes against humanity. Listen to me. No one came to this country. Everybody who came, came on their own free will as immigrants looking for a better life. You wasn't on the Mayflower, baby. That was in 1620. You were on the White Lion in August of 1619. You were brought over here as slaves. You're the only people. Everybody else came as immigrants, even the Native Americans, on their own free will. Cochise and Geronimo and Chief Joseph. And the Native Americans, the Shining, the Chickasaw, they came over here. The Nest Purse came over here from Asia up through the Bering Straits and came to the United States. But you came as a result of the triangular slave trade. And you didn't become citizens until 1619. And since we've been to the 1960s, and, the, and decency says that you need to treat me right. And, but there was a problem. I'm through. And here's the problem. The problem is, is that once they signed the, the, the uh, voting rights bill in 65, Five days after they sign it, riots break out in Watts. And then more riots would break out in 67 in Newark, in Detroit, and riots would break out in Louisville in 68 on 28th and Dumanil. Y'all ain't helping me. And everybody's wondering, now, wait a minute, why are y'all riding when you just had the most progressive transformation, progressive policies since Reconstruction? You got Brown, you got Montgomery, you got voting rights, you got public accommodation. And now y'all burning things down. And the reason why is because you only did the first phase. You, all you did was treat me decently. But the second phase is fully quality. Let me illustrate what I mean. There's a man in, New, in, in, in North Carolina. His uh, name is Ronnie Wallace Long. In 1976, he was convicted. This brother was convicted of rape, raping a white woman. And they gave him life. And he spent 44 years in jail until 2021, 20, 2020, when they, under the Innocence Project, re-examined the evidence and discovered he was innocent. Now that's what he looked like in 76. But this is how he looks now. That's him now. So he went from that young man to this man in prison for a crime he did not commit. And not only that, but the prosecutor and the DA in 76 and the police knew he was innocent. But they suppressed evidence and he missed 44 years of his life. Now, what, what does justice mean for this brother? Well, you got to do two phases. Decency and full equality. 
Now, what's the decent thing to do? The first thing you got to do is what? Let him out. But once you let him out, <laughs> there is a second phase. What's the second phase? Pay up. Are you with me? You got to pay. And they didn't want to pay him, but he kept pressing his claim and say, you railroaded me. You took 44 years of my life. And they gave him the largest. First of all, they apologized. They acknowledged. And then they gave him $25 million. That's justice. Can I tell you why every city you go to, black folk at the bottom? Can I tell you why Kentucky State and Simmons have the lowest endowments in the state? Because they let us out. But they have never repaired you. And King said that when they said, okay, we're going to let you come in the UK, he said that didn't cost you anything but a mental adjustment. He said, in fact, it helped your bottom line. Because you got better when you let us in. When you let us into your basketball programs and your football program, they would have been going to Kentucky State but you let us in and you realize, well, this is a good deal. It caused the black community to go down and the white community went up. Their institutions went up because they got the best, the cream of our crop. So it, you had a mental adjustment. He said, but if you want to fix this thing, you got to go to the next phase. See, and the next phase is you got to pay me. He, he said, those who've been the victims of special mistreatment now must be the recipients of special treatment in order for justice and equality. If you steal my car on Monday and you get saved on Tuesday and you still driving my car on Wednesday, you were not saved on Tuesday. Because if you steal my car on Monday, and get saved, hallelujah, on Tuesday. What you going to do on Wednesday? You going to what? Wrong. You ain't going to bring my car back. You're going to bring it back, fill with gas, tune up, and, and you know, new tires. You worked 246 years and didn't get a paycheck. That's 222 million hours, 91 trillion dollars. And didn't get a paycheck. I want my paycheck every week. I don't want to wait 246 years. And when you were fired, Frederick Douglass said you got free, freedom and famine at the same time. Because you didn't get anything. He said you got freedom to be hungry, freedom to be cold, freedom without land, freedom without food to eat. It was freedom and famine at the same time. And the only reason that they did it was not because they loved you. They needed you. Because the union was losing the Civil War. Ah. <sighs> General McClellan had Lee Cornett at the Battle of Antietam in 1862. But he let Lee escape. Could have ended it. Went on three more years, two more years, three more years. Could have ended it. But he let him go. And Lincoln said, we're not going to beat Lee. And somebody said, you're not going to beat Lee unless you get you some colored soldiers. So they signed something called the Emancipation Proclamation as a war document. 
in order to get us to fight. And 200,000 of us fought in the Civil War and saved the Union. You think Lincoln freed you? You freed Lincoln. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And they started recruiting us because they needed us. They had a campaign to get us into the military. They had a little jingle they had. It was, uh, they said, said McClellan, no, 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 no. Uh, they tried to tell us how, when it just begun, how to win the, you, how to win the war. Uh, but uh, Kentucky had his angst and Lincoln had his fears. But the Union needs to be saved by the colored volunteers. McClellan took to Richmond 200 soldiers brave said I'll save the union if you keep the Negroes behave McClellan had his way the union had his tears but the union could be saved if you have the colored volunteers so let us rally boys let's rally let us never mind the past we got a hard road to travel but our day is coming fast for God is for the right and we have no need to fear the union will be saved by the colored volunteers and the colored volunteers fought like like uh, William J. Simmons my predecessor fought in, in the battle of Petersburg and was there at Appomattox and watched Lee get off his horse traveler to surrender to Grant and Grant had a horse named Cincinnati and uh, they said, you don't want Grant because Grant drinks too much. But Grant ended up kicking Lee's behind. And Lincoln said, y'all said he drinks. Go find out what liquor he's using so I can give every general some of that liquor. And they did not give you anything. Nothing. Whites got 62 acres in the Midwest, in the Western Midwest. But we got no 40 acres. We didn't get a mule. You didn't get nothing. You've never been repaired. You've, you've never been repaired from Washington to Adams to Jefferson to Madison to Monroe to Martin Van Buren to Andrew Jackson, uh, f from P P Polk, to Zachary Taylor, to Millard Fillmore, to Buchanan, to Lincoln, to Grant, to Rutherford B. Hayes, uh, to uh, Chester Arthur, uh, to uh, Grover Cleveland and Benjamin Harrison and Grover Cleveland again and William McKinley and uh, Teddy Roosevelt and Howard Taft and Woodrow Wilson and William Harding and Calvin Coolidge and Herbert Hoover and Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Harry S. Truman uh, and Dwight D. Eisenhower and John F. Kennedy and Richard, uh, no, no, uh, Johnson and Nixon and Ford and, and Carter and Reagan and Herbert Walker Bush and Bill Clinton and William Bush and Barack Obama and... Uh, I didn't want to mention his name. Y'all know who he is. The red, the orange man, and then Biden. Preach, Kevin Cosby. You've never got anything. They don't even want you to know what they've done. And that's why they don't want you to read anything. They are changing everything. They're taking us back. And they don't want you to know what I'm talking about because if they can block awareness, then they can dodge responsibility. But I'm going to Frankfurt. I'm going to throw it in their face. I'm going to say, 
you might not pay me, but you owe me. Now, I know some of y'all saying, the preacher, you've been, you get a king, you don't quote a king, I ain't seen no Bible. I know y'all. Y'all going to put me on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. I don't care. So just for you legalistic folk, let me give you a scripture. It's called, it's Deuteronomy 16, 19. It's called, do not pervert justice. If you stole something from me, if you stole my labor, if you taxed me to build parks I could not recreate in and taxed me to build schools I couldn't go to, you owe me. It said, don't pervert justice or show partiality. And that word partiality in Hebrew is the word face. In other words, don't look at my face and say, okay, I'm not going to, just because you're color. I'm going to be biased towards you. He says, don't take a bribe. In other words, don't lie just to get in office. And don't twist folks' words. Don't say that King was saying, all we need to do is just come together and have kumbaya and, and not say what he said in his book. Namely, if you've done something special against me, you owe me. You owe me. And he died trying to get your money. And we got to keep on fighting. And it's easy. I'm through. It's easy to think that things can't change. It's easy to think that they've got all the power, but, but we're still talking about King, aren't we? Because the jailhouse couldn't stop him. And billy clubs couldn't stop him. And biting dogs in Birmingham and fire hoses couldn't stop him. And mob violence in Chicago couldn't stop him. And the FBI and Edgar Hoover couldn't stop him. And somebody asked me, he said, what are you going to say in 2027? 20, you love King so much when the tapes come out about his alleged picadillos. Yeah. My response is, I don't know what King did when he went to bed. I just know what he did when he got up. <laughs> and when he got up, He made you, you are a citizen. Listen to me. You are a citizen not because of Jefferson or Washington or Lincoln. You are a citizen, black people. Because this brother here. And I'm going to keep on fighting. And it's easy to think that you can't win. But let me tell you why you can win. You can win because the man has some power. But the man don't have all power. Do I have a witness in here? In other words, Trump can't counsel the son. <laughs> Congress can't push back the stars. Because he don't control the stars. He can't shut down gravity. Because they don't control everything. Every time you breathe in and breathe out, that's because they can't suffocate air. Because God controls. Oh, they can't stop spring from coming. They can't stop the birds from singing. They can't move the sun where the moon is and the moon where the sun is. Because they don't have all power. And whenever you think that the enemy has the upper hand on you, you ought to remind yourself that they don't have all power. Do I have a witness in here? But I serve... A God that's got all power. And he sits high 
and he looks low. He's got all power. Tape measures can't measure him. Math can't figure him out. Y'all ain't hearing me. Historians can't quantify him because he's got all power. Do I have a witness in here? I said he's got all power. Woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Well, prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies because he's got all power. And if you call on him, he will make a way out of no way. Hey, man, you can't stop him. The songwriter said, when the Lord says so, you got to move. Whether you be high or low, whether you be rich or poor, when the Lord says so, you got to move. Tell the gambler on the street, tell the policeman on his beat that when the Lord says so, you got to move. Tell the United States, tell the president too, and don't forget to inform the internal revenue that when the Lord says so, you got to move. And I want to let you know that he's moving even when you don't see it. The Lord is moving because you can't stop him. Water can't drown him. Fire can't burn him. Doors can't shut him out. Death can't kill him. And the grave can't hold him. Because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Somebody holler, yeah. I don't know about you. But I don't believe he brought us this far to leave us now. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Look at your name and say, neighbor, Jesus sent king. They didn't want to do it, but king, Rosa, Fannie Lou Hamer, my mama, my daddy, yes, yes, yes. They didn't get to go to school like you. They didn't get to vote like you. But yes, they prayed and said, Lord, I might not get there, but bless my children. And I don't know about you, but I'm here right now. I'm going to speak before the governor. And can I tell you why? Because somebody prayed for me. Your mama prayed for you. And God answers prayer. Do I have a witness in here? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's no way I could have survived had the Lord not prayed for me there's no way yeah you don't have to come to church to shout you just need a memory sometimes in your house when you look at what he's given you sometimes in your car when you see what you're driving sometimes Look in your closet, look at your clothes, look at your clothes, and say, Lord, you brought me from a mighty long way. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Somebody holler, yes, Lord. Let's stand all over the worship center. Let's bless the Lord for that mighty word that went forth. Amen. Amen. 
God has all power in his hands, amen? He's brought us from a mighty long way. And for that, we can say thank you. Maybe you're here today and you don't have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is your time to connect with Jesus. This is your time to connect with St. Stephen's Church. If you're watching online, all you have to do is email us at newstart at sclive.org or you can call us at 502-583-6798 or maybe you're here on campus and you have not connected with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our decisions councils are standing down front. Why don't you come and give your life to God on the day? If you're standing in the need of prayer, why don't you come and give it to God? As our choir leads us in song, the doors of the church are open. Will you come? There'll be one. Let's bless the Lord for that mighty word that went forth in this place. Amen. Amen. Let us not forget if you've arrived at the tithes and the offering, you can continue to give across all our platforms. Amen. Amen. Maddie's Kitchen is open. And let us not forget on tomorrow evening to go out and support our pastor as he is speaking. Amen. Amen. And then today at 3 o'clock, the Louisville Orchestra will be here with our own St. Stephen's Choir. Let's come out at 3 o'clock and let's support them. Amen? Amen. And I want you to do me a favor, please. As they are getting ready to prepare for this afternoon at 3 o'clock, we ask that you ex to exit the uh, sanctuary as quickly as possible so they may have a chance to get the sanctuary set up for this afternoon. Amen? Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us go before the Lord in prayer. All wise and knowing God. We come before you, Lord God, just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for your word going forth through in this place, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us, Lord God, that you are still God and that you still have all power in your hands, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to leave this place whenever your presence, help us to go out, Lord God, and continue to fight for justice, Lord God. Help us to love one another, Lord God, as you have loved us, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, we love you, we adore you, and we magnify your holy name. As we prepare to leave this place whenever your presence, cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ till we return to your church once more. These and all the blessed words in Jesus Christ, let the church say amen and amen.